Hello and welcome to the WHS Journal Public Affairs Program. I'm Jerry Williams. Join Alicia Morgan for part two of her conversation with woman of God, author, and entrepreneur, Vanessa Adjidwa. That's happening now on the WHS Journal. It's news and public affairs. So a lot of times people put these things off. I'm, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I want to lose the weight, but I'm not going to, you know, just taking that first step to yeah. just walk it maybe, right? Yeah. So things like that. So procrastination is a big one. It's a big reason why women sit on the sidelines. Yeah. But n- identify what the root cause is. Yeah. What's stopping you? You know, Vanessa, as you're sharing that, another scripture came to mind. And I'm thinking about the um, the servants with the talents. And what did that last one that, you know, was given one talent, what, what did he say? He said, I'm afraid. I know you're a, a you know, harsh. a harsh uh, master. Mm-hmm. So I buried it. And here it is. Right. And didn't do anything with it. Yeah. So a lot of times and I, I, I share in depth in the book um, where I talk about harsh conditions Mm -hmm. and I think sometimes life happens to us and it causes us to doubt and 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 causes us to fear yeah right so then we put off those things yeah because we think not I yeah it can't be not me yeah yeah. But why not you? But why not you? Um, I, I, you know, I, I, going back to even that scripture, you know, all the other um, servants, you know, built. What, I mean, what, what do you think the difference was between those servants that, you know, gained more and more and more and this one servant just like, you know, what, what do you think was the difference? The difference is we all have the tendency to procrastinate. We all have the tendency to be afraid of mm-hmm. failure. We all have the tendency to allow, you know, negative voices to stop us. Yeah. We all have that. And you talked about that, silencing those limiting right. voices. However, those who do build momentum. Yes. So in your doing, right, in your movement, so as you move and as you build and as you try, yes, you may, you know, you may encounter some challenges, some setbacks, some failure. But the more you move and the more you act on your dreams and your goals, you start to build momentum and you start to see things flourish. Yes. Right. And you take what is working mm. like they did. They took what was working and built upon that and gained more on, on the investment for the master. That's the difference between. The servants who actually took the talents the master had given them and and built with it, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Traded with it, right? It, it, in business, we would say, you know, invested it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And gained returns on it mm-hmm. versus the, the one who said, oh, you know what? I'll just put it in a bank account. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not yielding anything, right? Yes. So the more you, you build and the more you act on your dreams and your goals, the momentum really pushes you forward. You It, it propels you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that feeds right into one of your other steps, which is embracing failure, right? Embracing failure, and you, you talked about it so much in, in what you just said too. Is um, the more you do, is the more momentum builds, and in order to even see success, there has to be some failure in between, some things that work and some that didn't. Correct. And, and so we're not going to give you the entire book on in this interview, uh, ladies and gentlemen and teens and young adults. We want you to, to, to purchase the book because it's full of encouraging you know, nuggets. One of the things you talked about that I, I love, and sometimes we want to sit in our little comfort zone, right? Thinking that we can succeed all by ourselves. And you, this term, I said, I love this term. He said, goal friends. He said, find your tribe and uh, find that gold friend. So tell us a little bit more what that is and how can women begin to find their gold friend maybe? I, I'm thinking about a an African proverb that talks about if you want to go further, Go with others, yes. right? If you want to go fast, go by yourself, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So we think oftentimes think if we if I do this by myself, I won't have others to like limit me or stop me. I can go faster. Yeah. But what we fail to realize is faster isn't always success, right? Right? When you have goal friends, goal friends, because life happens mm-hmm. in your journey, in your building, there will come discouragement. Yeah. 
There will come hindrances, right? There will come setbacks. These goal friends are there to motivate you along the journey. So when you go too fast and you, you, um, you know, become winded mm. and you're all by yourself yes. and now you're in this corner, and you're like, I'm tired. Right. Yes. But if you go with goal friends and you, you have a circle of people who encourage you, who inspire you, who pour into you so that when you are tired, mm-hmm. when you are empty, mm-hmm. right, they fill you back up and they, they refuel you for the journey ahead. And it reminds me of, and I'm, I'm an um, aviation geek. I don't know if you know that. So I love airplanes and I've worked in the aerospace industry for an, over a decade. And one thing I always remember is if you think about how an aircraft takes off, it starts out very slow, right, on the runway, and then it stops, right? And then it builds up momentum. It takes off. Mm. But then it plateaus at a certain level, mm. right? And it just cruises. A lot of time people think, if I go so fast, I'll get to my destination, mm-hmm. right? And, and the amount of work that it takes for an airplane to truly function mm-hmm. from the time it's on the ground to the time it takes off is phenomenal. It takes an entire crew, not just the crew you see on board that feeds you and gives you water or tells you we're about to reach our destination or the pilot. There is an on-ground crew. So the goal friends are like that. These are people who, and they all are different with their different giftings. There are those who are there to empower you. There are those who are there to inspire you. There are those who are there to sharpen you. Those who are there to even kick you and say, look, you need to get up and go, yeah. right? Um, so it's really important that you have those goal friends. And that's what you're doing with this book because it, it sh- certainly did kick me in some <laughs> when I read some of these uh, different things. But as we were talking, and it, it, this is just how my brain functions, I keep hearing scriptures every time I talk to someone. It's like the Lord just pops stuff off in my head. And I'm just thinking about how the fact that when the Lord sent out the disciples, he didn't send them one by one. You know, we tend to want to go and just do our own thing and not have to worry about dealing with anybody else. But the Lord sent two by two. Right. And and so we have to remember, I love that the whole gold friends that sometimes when we um, don't get into relationships, it talks about the body. We, you know, the body cannot function just by being the eye or being the arm. We need each other. We need the body to function properly. And and so I thank you for, um, you know, just putting that in there because people sometimes need to lean on that, lean on the fact that we need each other. Last thing that I want to touch on personally that I find that I need for myself and maybe somebody else in the audience may need is to be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. I want you to talk a little bit about that. So being kind to yourself is coming to that place of self-acceptance, self-awareness. And when I say self-acceptance and self-awareness, a lot of times we're so focused on goals and dreams and doing that we don't stop to appreciate what we have, Mm -hmm. who we have, and how far we've even come. So instead of, you know, focusing on the negatives and, oh, I can't believe I didn't meet my target, just be kind to yourself and say, look how far I've come. Yes. Just this time last year, I wasn't here, Mm -hmm. right? I may not have achieved all that I wanted to achieve. And this is actually a very, the timing of this interview is great because this is the end of the year. I can only imagine how many people are out there beating themselves up saying, well, it's Q4. I didn't even do half of what I wanted to do this year. Be kind to yourself and and count your blessings. Count the fact that, you know, you've gotten to where you've gotten to so far. Yes. Right? Yes, there's more ground to cover. Yes. But being kind to yourself is not allowing the outside to dictate what success is for you. Right? Taking that time to rest. Not criticize, overly criticizing yourself. I mean, there's so much to being kind to yourself. We can't even like uncover the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But just be be intentional with you. So we're talking to author, speaker, mom, daughter, girlfriend, sister to many, 
author of Women Stop Sitting on the Sidelines, Vanessa Ajidwa, and owner of Vanessa Ajidwa and Company. Uh, she has a plethora of ministries that, uh, uh, you know, she's a multifaceted minister, uh, marketplace, and just, you know, um, one of the mi- ministries that she has is called Meant for Her. And in, in that ministry, she ministers to women, um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Mentors women and and do all of that stuff. And I, I, I can't even begin to tell you all of what she does. And she's such an inspiration to me uh, as well. And so I'm so happy that she's here. So if you're tuning in, you're listening to Vanessa Ajidua. And we're going to tell you where you can find her, where you can have her come and, and speak to you at your church or your women's ministry. Um, as While we're on it, why don't you tell us how people can get in touch with you, Vanessa? So you can email me at Vanessa dot, dot the VSA code dot com. And that's D V S A code dot com. That encompasses all my um, different ministries and works. So you can reach me at Vanessa dot D and that's the word T H E V S A C O dot com. And I'm on social media. If you Search up Vanessa Ajidwa. I'm on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and also YouTube. So I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. You can send me a DM. Awesome. And I'm going to spell her last name for you. It's A-J-I-D-U-A-A-H. Say that. Spell it again for me, Vanessa. So it's A-J-I-D-U-A-H. You had it right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, um... Before we close out this interview, I also want you to speak to women out there who are sitting on the sidelines. We've talked about stop procrastinating. We talked about, lim- you know, getting rid of the limiting voices. And just, these are just only a few of the things that are in this book. And being kind to yourself and embracing failure because we can't succeed if we don't get through some of those rough patches, right? I want you to speak to that woman out there that God has called. Um, and you guys have to go back and listen to the beginning of the, the, the conversation because she talked about how God, you know, asked her to step away. And and this is the thing, God asked her to step away. Sometimes we're probably still sitting in places that God has called us from. I want you to speak to women out there probably who are sitting in some place That God has said, you know, it's time for you to step away from that or women who are just sitting, not doing what God has called them to do. Mm. So I subtitled the book, You're Not a Furniture. A lot of times women, and if you're hearing my voice, you think you're only needed or wanted in one place. And I think I want to talk to the woman who feels as if there has been a shift in your life. There has been changes. We've we've gone through pandemics. We've gone through career changes or health. You've had health scares, whatever it is, right? You're feeling stuck. You're feeling like you're watching everyone else. You know, you're, you're seeing a glimpse of what your potential could be in everyone else, but you're saying to yourself, how do I move forward from here? I want you to remember that before you were formed in your mother's womb, the Lord knew you. And even then, he already predestined you. He called you. And then there is there are gifts and talents within you that God has already preordained. And there's a whole world out there waiting for you. And it, it might seem, you know, you may even say my talent doesn't seem like much, but there's a whole world out there. I always tell people, you know, get into the get into the market, get into a ministry, get into the business realm, because although someone is already doing what you see that you want to do, your DNA is different. Mm. You're called to do it differently. You're going to do it differently. There are many motivational speakers out there. There are many women who are doing women empowerment, but I go about it differently than everyone else. So if you're out there listening to me and you're a woman, stop comparing yourself to others And begin to really take stock of the giftings and the talents God has given you and begin to talk to God about how he wants to use that. You're not a furniture. Stop sitting on the sideline. Thank you so much for that, Vanessa. And I'm going to ask you to give your email again where people can reach you um, and so that people can contact you. So you can reach me at Vanessa, and that's V-A-N-E-S-S-A dot T-H-E-V-S-A-C-O dot com. Thank you. 
And you just heard Alicia Morgan's conversation with Vanessa Adjidwa. If you would like more information about what you heard today, call WHS 860-346-1049, 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily of those of the staff or management of the station. The WHS Journal, it's news and public affairs.